The history of science and technology in the Indian subcontinent begins with prehistoric human activity. The Indus Valley Civilization too early, states and empires, following independence science and technology in the Republic of India has included automobile engineering, information technology, communications as well as space, polar and nuclear sciences, prehistory. By 5500 BCE a number of sites similar to Mergar had appeared, forming the basis of later Chalcolithic cultures. The inhabitants of these sites maintained trading relations with Near East and Central Asia. This was developed in the Indus Valley Civilization by around 4500 BCE. The size and prosperity of the Indus Civilization grew as a result of this innovation, which eventually led to more planned settlements making use of drainage and sewerage. Sophisticated irrigation and water storage systems were developed by the Indus Valley Civilization, including artificial reservoirs at Gurna dated to 3000 BCE, and an early canal irrigation system from C. 2600 BCE, cotton was cultivated in the region by the 5th-4th millennia BCE. Sugarcane was originally from tropical South and Southeast Asia. Different species likely originated in different locations with S. barberi originating in India, and S. and S. officinarum coming from New Guinea. The inhabitants of the Indus Valley developed a system of standardization, using weights and measures, evident by the excavations made at the Indus Valley sites. This technical standardization in enabled gauging devices to be effectively used in angular measurement and measurement for construction. Calibration was also found in measuring devices along with multiple subdivisions in case of some devices. One of the earliest known docks is at Lothal, located away from the main current to avoid deposition of silt. Modern oceanographers have observed that the Harappans must have possessed knowledge relating to tides in order to build such a dock on the ever-shifting course of the Sabarmati, as well as exemplary hydrography and maritime engineering. Excavations at Balakit, present-day Pakistan, have yielded evidence of an early furnace. The furnace was most likely used for the manufacturing of ceramic objects. Ovens, dating back to the civilization's mature phase, were also excavated at Balakit. The Kalabangan archaeological site further yields evidence of pot-shaped hearths, which at one site have been found both on ground and under underground. Kilns with fire and kiln chambers have also been found at the Kalabang insight. Based on archaeological and textual evidence, Joseph E. Schwartzberg, a University of Minnesota professor emeritus of geography, traces the origins of Indian cartography to the Indus Valley civilization. The use of large-scale constructional plans, cosmological drawings, and cartographic material was known in India with some regularity since the Vedic period. Climatic conditions were responsible for the destruction of most of the evidence, however, a number of excavated surveying instruments and measuring rods have yielded convincing evidence of early cartographic activity. Schwartzberg, on the subject of surviving maps, further holds that, though not numerous, a number of map-like graffiti appear among the thousands of Stone Age Indian cave paintings, and at least one complex mesolithic diagram is believed to be a representation of the cosmos. Archaeological evidence of an animal drawn plow dates back to 2500 BCE in the Indus Valley Civilization. The earliest available swords of copper discovered from the Harappan sites date back to 2300 BCE. Swords have been recovered in archaeological findings throughout the Ganges Jamuna Duaba region of India, consisting of bronze but more commonly copper. 
Post Maharjana Padas, High Middle Ages, the Arthur Shastra of Kautil you mentions the construction of dams and bridges, the use of suspension bridges using plaited bamboo and iron chain was visible by about the 4th century, the stupa, the precursor of the pagoda and torii, was constructed by the 3rd century BCE. Rock-cut step wells in the region date from 200-400 CE. Subsequently, the construction of wells at Dankan step ponds at Bintmal took place. During the first millennium BCE, the Vaisheshika school of atomism was founded. The most important proponent of this school was Kannada, an Indian philosopher who lived around 200 BCE. The school proposed that atoms are indivisible and eternal, can neither be created nor destroyed, and that each one possesses its own distinct visesa. It was further elaborated on by the Buddhist school of atomism, of which the philosophers Dharmakirti and Dignaga in the 7th century CE were the most important proponents. They considered atoms to be point-sized, durationless, and made of energy. By the beginning of the common era glass was being used for ornaments and cases in the region. Contact with the Greco-Roman world added newer techniques, and local artisans learned methods of glass molding, decorating and coloring by the early centuries of the Common Era. The Satavahana period further reveals short cylinders of composite glass, including those displaying a lemon-yellow matrix covered with green glass. Woods originated in the region before the beginning of the Common Era. Woods was exported and traded throughout Europe, China, the Arab world, and became particularly famous in the Middle East, where it became known as Damascus steel. Archaeological evidence suggests that manufacturing process for woods was also in existence in South India before the Christian era. Evidence for using bow instruments for carding comes from India. The mining of diamonds and its early use as gemstones originated in India. Golconda served as an important early center for diamond mining and processing. Diamonds were then exported to other parts of the world. Early reference to diamonds comes from Sanskrit texts. The Arthur Shastra also mentions diamond trade in the region. The Iron Pillar of Delhi was erected at the times of Chandragupta II Vikramaditya. The Rasaratna Samukhaya explains the existence of two types of ores for zinc metal, one of which is ideal for metal extraction while the other is used for medicinal purpose. The origins of the spinning wheel are unclear but India is one of the probable places of its origin. Origin. The device certainly reached Europe from India by the 14th century. The cotton gin was invented in India as a mechanical device known as Chaki, the wooden worm worked ruler. This mechanical device was, in some parts of the region, driven by water power. The Ajanta caves yield evidence of a single roller cotton gin in use by the 5th century. This cotton gin was used until further innovations were made in form of foot-powered gins. Chinese documents confirm at least two missions to India, initiated in 647, for obtaining technology for sugar refining. Each mission returned with different results on refining sugar. Was a musical theorist who authored a Sanskrit treatise on prosody. There is evidence that in his work on the enumeration of syllabic combinations, Pingala stumbled upon both the Pascal triangle and binomial coefficients, although he did not have knowledge of the binomial theorem itself. A description of binary numbers is also found in the works of Pingala. The Indians also developed the use of the law of signs in multiplication. Negative numbers and the subtrahend had been used in East Asia since the 2nd century BCE, and Indian mathematicians were aware of negative numbers by the 7th century CE, and the role in mathematical problems of debt was understood. Although the Indians were not the first to use the subtrahend, 
they were the first to establish the law of signs with regards to the multiplication of positive and negative numbers, which did not appear in East Asian texts until 1299. Mostly consistent and correct rules for working with negative numbers were formulated, and the diffusion of these rules led the Arab intermediaries to pass it on to Europe. A decimal number system using hieroglyphics dates back to 3000 BC in Egypt, and was later in use in ancient India where the modern numeration system was developed. By the 9th century CE, the Hindu-Arabic numeral system was transmitted transmitted from India through the Middle East and the rest of the world. The concept of zero as a number and not merely a symbol for separation is attributed to India. In India, practical calculations were carried out using zero, which was treated like any other number by the 9th century CE, even in case of division. Brahma Gupta was able to find solutions of Pell's equation, conceptual design for a perpetual motion machine by Bashkara two dates to 1150. He described a wheel that he claimed would run forever, the trigonometric functions of sine and vicine, from which it was trivial to derive the cosine, were used by the mathematician Aryabhata in the late 5th century. The calculus theorem now known as Rolle's theorem was stated by mathematician Bashkara II in the 12th century. Indigo was used as a dye in India, which was also a major center for its production and processing. The indigo fera tinctoria variety of indigo was domesticated in India. Indigard, used as a dye, made its way to the Greeks and the Romans via various trade routes, and was valued as a luxury product. The cashmere wool fiber, also known as pasham or pashmina, was used in the handmade shawls of Kashmir. The woolen shawls from Kashmir region find written mention between 3rd century BCE and the 11th century CE. Crystallized sugar was discovered by the time of the Gupta dynasty, and the earliest reference to candied sugar comes from India. Dute was also cultivated in India. Muslin was named after the the city where Europeans first encountered it, Mosul, in what is now Iraq, but the fabric actually originated from Dhaka in what is now Bangladesh. In the 9th century, an Arab merchant named Suleiman makes note of the material's origin in Bengal. European scholar Francesco I reproduced a number of Indian maps in his magnum opus La Cartographia Antica dell'India. Out of these maps, two have been reproduced using a manuscript of Logaprakasa originally compiled by the polymath Mondra as a source. The other manuscript, used as a source by Francesco I, is titled Samgraha colonial era. Early volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica described cartographic charts made by the seafaring Dravidian people. In Encyclopedia Britannica, Stephen Oliver Fortin Amp, John F. Gilmartin, Jr. described the gunpowder technology in 18th century Mysore. Haider Ali, Prince of Mysore, developed war rockets with an important change, the use of metal cylinders to contain the combustion powder. Although the hammered soft iron he used was crude, the bursting strength of the container of black powder was much higher than the earlier paper construction. Thus a greater internal pressure was possible, with the resultant greater thrust of the propulsive jet. The rocket body was lashed with leather thongs to a long bamboo stick. Range was perhaps up to three quarters of a mile. Although individually these rockets were not accurate, dispersion error became less important when large numbers were fired rapidly in mass attacks. They were particularly effective against cavalry and were hurled into the air after lighting, or skimmed along the hard dry ground. Haider Ali's son, Tipu Sultan, continued to develop and expand the use of rocket weapons, reportedly increasing the number of rocket troops from 1,200 to a core of 5,000.
In battles at Seringapatam in 1792 and 1799 these rockets were used with considerable effect against the British. By the end of the 18th century the postal system in the region had reached high levels of efficiency. According to Thomas Broughton, the Maharaja of Jodhpur sent daily offerings of fresh flowers from his capital to Nathadvara and they arrived in time for the first religious darshan at sunrise. Later this system underwent modernization with the establishment of the British Raj. The Post Office Act 17 of 1837 enabled the Governor-General of India to convey messages by post within the territories of the East India Company. Mail was available to some officials without charge, which became a controversial privilege as the years passed. The Indian Post Office Service was established on October 1. 1837. The British also constructed a vast railway network in the region for both strategic and commercial reasons. The British education system aimed at producing able civil and administrative services candidates, exposed a number of Indians to foreign institutions. Sivjagadish Chandra Bose, Prafula Chandra Ray, Satyendra Nath Bose, Meghnad Saha, P. C. Mahalanobis, Sa C. V. Raman, Subra Menian Chandra Sekha, Homi Baba, Srinivasa Ramanujan, Vikram Sarabhai, Hargob and Kaurana, and Harish Chandra were among the notable scholars of this period. Extensive interaction between colonial and native sciences was seen during most of the colonial colonial era. Western science came to be associated with the requirements of nation-building rather than being viewed entirely as a colonial entity, especially as it continued to fuel necessities from agriculture to commerce. Scientists from India also appeared throughout Europe. By the time of India's independence colonial science had assumed importance within the westernized intelligentsia and establishment. 